Hey everybody. <sighs> Happy Sunday. Or Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> whenever you're watching it. Everybody hear me? Hey Cashew, hey Jennifer, hey Artsy Traveler, hey Van Miller, hey Andrew, moderating in the blue font. <sighs> Fred, Sarah, Emma. Bob, Paul, sorry if I missed your names. Hack Creek Dog Training, good to see the name. Carolyn, Colette, Siobhan. Uh, so welcome to another Sunday edition of Not Much of Anything. I will be your host for this evening. My name is Jeff Warren. I am a uh, happy loiterer in the do-nothing space, and I wish to bring you with me. Or rather, I'm hoping you wish to bring me with you. Kind of a both ways thing. Um, gosh, we've been doing this about uh, years. <laughs> Andrew Curtis, how to escape the ego, asking for a friend. Let me know if you ever find out. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so the Do Nothing Project is our uh, ongoing community experiment and just kind of supporting each other as human beings in this life via a roughly 25 minute deliberate uh, bout of nothing whatsoever with a few words ahead of time and maybe some sharing afterwards. It's a meditation, um, but kind of, it can be your, your kind of meditation. You know, you can make it your own. You may have your own kind of practice you do, or it doesn't even have to be quote, formal meditation. It can be whatever form of truly unplugging from the compulsions of the everyday and just being here, whether it's laying down or stretching or, you know, formally meditating or just sitting. And there are many, many um, meditation paths, many styles of meditation that have, and each of those styles has a kind of, um, uh, it has certain landmarks that you might expect along the way, like the, the path of concentration has certain landmarks and stages that you go through, the path of insight, certain landmarks that are different from the concentration ones that you go to, path of awareness, path of kind of loving kindness, uh, path of just sitting, which is sort of the one we do here, kind of a Zen thing. Um, they all have their own uh, flavors and they're all different with every nervous system that hits them, but there are certain uh you know, shared similarities to particularly once you implement a technique that can happen. The technique I really like the most, and I think it's because I, I spend so much time doing so many other kinds of practices. I like thinking creatively about uh, meditation and how meditation can be, you know, fit different kinds of circumstances and situations and nervous systems and, and just playing across the whole spectrum of meditations, styles of meditation. And I do that you know, via, um, you know, calm and tempers and happier now my home base thing. And, and sometimes here too, but in base really for me, it's because I do so much of that go wide. I like a very simple, simple practice as my kind of baseline when I just sit and I don't, you know, when I'm not doing this and I just want to sit for 10 or 15 minutes, this is more or less what I do. You know, I, um, uh, I, you know, I obviously, I kind of basically guided this evening in what I, what I do. And it, the idea of it really is to just, um, to truly see if you can be comfortable doing nothing. Um, you know, you're, you, you keep, you notice in first more obvious ways, how your mind is bolting and surging and thinking about this thing still, or worrying about this, or still feeling the emotions from this thing that happened in the day. Um, and that's all fine. You know, you don't try to stop any of that. You just kind of notice that it's happening, but eventually that sort of, settles sometimes sometimes not um it's fine if it doesn't you <laughs> know sometimes it doesn't really for me but as it that settles then there may be more subtle ways and subtle doings subtle ways in which you're and it's so weird like it's amazing how deep the trying to do something or accomplish something or be good or you know or control your situation goes you could just be sitting here doing nothing and you think you're doing nothing and then you realize there's a part of you that's like really trying to get this right, this do nothing thing and trying to perform meditation or, or there's some, and some subtler doing that's happening. And I just like to sit and just notice as each of those programs slowly 
cools off. Um, and sometimes, like I said, they don't, they don't necessarily, but, um, but I don't really look for landmarks within the meditation itself, other than an, a kind of settling that does, that can be kind of click into again, like sometimes not, but I think really the place to look is in your life. But are you, after you do that, do you find yourself just more, you know, available to life, more good natured, more, um, compassionate, whatever, the, whatever it is. And, uh, you know, it seems to be that that's the case for a lot of people. So it's kind of a pause to just let yourself be a body, be a human here. And we do it together. That's my spiel. Usually I don't give a spiel, but tonight I felt like it. And yes, Mitch, I'm at home tonight. Thank the Lord. Much prefer doing it at home. It's kind of hard with my kids. They're uh, both going down around now, there were two and four it's wild ages, but my oldest was up super early this morning with me, <laughs> so he's already getting ready to go to bed. Mm. Thanks, Archie Traveler. So yeah, so it's kind of quiet in the house right now. I can hear the last kiddo winding down. I can feel my own nervous system winding down. I'm excited to do some nothing. So this is my son's timer. We use it to uh, help him know how long to brush his teeth for and when to get ready, when to, when to get his jacket on for leaving for school. Not that he pays any attention to us or it. 25 minutes. I'll do one bell to begin and one bell to end. Thanks for joining me, friends. Thanks for, I really appreciate this community. This is such good medicine for me. I probably wouldn't do it otherwise. Thank you, Andrew, for moderating. Good to see all my regular pals. And thank you, everybody who's not saying hello in the in the chat there and all the people watching it later, particularly from other time zones. There we go. Thanks, Brooke. Grateful for you, too. <laughs> so, like I said, you can follow along with me, or you can just kind of tune me out. Sometimes it's nice to tune out the guidance altogether, but occasionally a prompt kind of floats in. Oh, yeah. Like starting with a few uh, more deliberate breaths, and it always feels good to do that. Oh, yeah. I breathe. I forgot to, that I'm breathing. I've been Breathing up here my entire day and breathing in like the three inches in the top of my chest. Now I'm going to breathe a little lower. A big breath into the belly, into the lower back, the sides. The in breath is sort of the upward motion. You can kind of, if you're feeling tired, you can kind of oxygenate, deliberately breathe in deeply, and it can bring some a little more alertness. Same with stretching up the spine, although you don't have to be sitting like this if you don't want to. And then the exhale, the downward motion. So is isn't just that you can kind of notice the rest of the diaphragm relaxing on the exhale. It isn't just that the exhale itself is sort of a little, it's a, like a mini down regulation of the the uh, nervous system. But it's also, I think, an opportunity to kind of arrive, like notice when you breathe out that you land somewhere, you land on the ground or floor, and you can feel that contact, that support. You also land right here. 
in this body, this moment. By this body, I mean your body. It'd be weird if you landed in my body. <laughs> so I'd be into it. Okay. And then the equanimity piece right off the top, which you know, kind of frame it almost more as an attitude, especially at the beginning of just not needing things to be perfect, not trying to push away sounds you don't like because the neighbors are too loud, not trying to quash some feeling or suppress some thinking, not trying to also grab onto something that feels good. It's like you're holding on to it for your dear life. So equanimity is staying in the middle. It's having this balanced, you know, letting what comes come, letting what goes go, but not trying to speed up or slow down any part of that. That's why patience is such a good cue for the practice. Like, well, where are you trying to get to? So we let everything be here let the situation be imperfect if it's imperfect and that should feel kind of like a relief like oh, i don't have to do anything to get this right i don't have to you know to prove yourself or be impressive to anyone Just let all that go. Literally, you can imagine taking it off your shoulders and putting it down, taking it off your big rucksack full of boulders, putting it down. I'll just sit here being a body. Yeah, so you can just sit and be, literally, just being a body. That feels good. It's kind of like nowhere you want to be, nowhere else you need to be. You don't need to implement any kind of formal technique other than that. You don't want. But it can also help if you, you know, do have a lot of busy brain stuff. And sometimes it just helps to pay attention to one thing in a very simple way. That's the home base. So it could be the feeling of the breath or sound or sensation in the body. It can be one thing that you just stay with as it gets ever more subtle. Eventually all you're doing is paying attention to like a point of stillness or quiet or something. So you just stay with that, this golden thread you're following. It can be like that or it can be you know, more of an open awareness thing where you know, you're with something, the breath, and 
Well, you notice the sound, you move to that. What I'd say about that is don't, you know, don't be sort of compulsively always trying to trade up. Like I gotta find a better thing to notice. It's more like from a place of complete, you know, easy goingness. Maybe I'll choose, check this out, or I could stay here. But the point is to get, to not feed the constant fixation and control happening in the mind. So you can check that out. Good. It's normal for the mind to wander off or you get distracted. It's kind of the rhythm of practice, this floating and coming back. And it's not a problem. Come back to right here. And when you just see, is there any kind of condition that I'm setting up for myself or I need things to be a certain way, even now? And what would happen if I just Kind of let that go. You're just with you know, each moment as it's emerging, the sound, the sensation, the breath. Like it's enough. Like each moment there's a kind of vertical fulfillment. So notice if you're getting ahead of things, anticipating, instead kind of Back off, back up, back up into your own awareness. Let things come to you. Not in any kind of rush. Let them come to you, not like you're waiting for them. Like you're just here.
sometimes things start to slow down a bit. And you might notice there's a quality of just being still in the body or quiet inside or outside for that matter or space somewhere. And those can be nice things to get curious about. Not in a fixated way, more like a delicate, just noticing stillness and kind of, which is kind of a being stillness, being the quiet, being the space, but not in some big deal way, just this gentle little kind of noticing orientation. And that can even be there with lots of busy thoughts and feelings.
okay yeah last couple minutes just nice to finish with uh some kind of simple gratitude practice or loving kindness something to yeah to use to kind of like you're in the, the practice of sharing uh any of the benefits of practice imagine that you could support other people in your community in your life in the world you can sort of send a blessing like may you be well may you be strong healthy happy and then it can be a you know, compassion practice too for all those who are having a hard time right now which there are many So it's a compassion practice is actually more active. It's like actively generating compassion. Imagining you can share that support somehow, creating that habit. Or maybe you just feel like, you know, saying thank you for life, for whatever you feel like being thankful for, or you feel like appreciating. Yeah, thank you for your practice. <clears throat> Thanks, friends. Thanks, Andrew, Lynn, Melissa, Valentina, to travel, Holly. Relaxed and ready for bed. Uh, hey Holly yeah vertical for full month that's just that's how I was experiencing it yeah thanks Andrew that's the new uh, uh, sub stack thing I'm doing which I'm really liking I'm going to probably put the do nothing project up on the sub stack uh, home base page somehow I got to figure out how to do that but mm, it'll be part of that I mean, it'll stay on YouTube, but put it up there, too. Mm. 25 minutes does go by fast, Janine. I know what you mean. <laughs> For me, too. Mahalo, Angela. Caitlin. And Hammer. Uh, awesome. And Hammer, no, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Um, yeah, nice. Well, good job. 25 minutes, Gene. Andrew, how do you balance letting go of attachment while being authentic and passionate about life? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I think it's, um, you know, it's sort of like an inquiry, you know, the practice is kind of like an inquiry into that in a way. Um, I, you know, someone asked, there was a question I kind of, at the beginning about the ego or something. Um, and I guess the way I think of it is, um, you're not trying to get rid of anything. You're not trying to get rid of your ego. You're not trying to, um, get rid of your passions. What you're trying, what, what's happening through a practice is, um, uh, the, the, uh, the part that's fixated, you know, the part, the part that's, it's like, imagine spaghetti. It's like spaghetti is your personality. Spaghetti is your, is your, you know, your different thoughts, your passions, your hobbies, your everything. Spaghetti, but it's covered in like, um, like tomato sauce suffering. 
it's like friction that's gumming everything up. And so with practice, what you're doing is you're just kind of like taking each strand of spaghetti and going and just like taking off the sauce. <laughs> Not that sauce, spaghetti sauce is delicious, but I mean, imagine if that were like friction or, you know, it's like the fixation, the, uh, the suffering stuff that like needs it to be this way and it binds up with the other stuff and needs it up. And so you end up in these intense um, dilemmas in your life where you're just so agonized or so chronically unhappy. And um, so what you're trying to do is just like, let everything be very smooth, like taking out all that friction so that all that is left is the pure strand of the, the love, the interest, the, you know, this is why people, when, when you go deeper into meditation, it, they say that um, uh, feel more, suffer less. Like you feel both pain more in a sense, because there's not the same blocks or ways in which you're trying to avoid it. So the full sensation, but it goes through you more quickly. And the same is with uh, fulfilling things. Like there's, you know, do you ever have the experience where you, you're enjoying something so much, you kind of don't enjoy it because you're really agonized about it ending or you're just like, you know, it's like this bittersweet layer, this like the suffery sauce that's all over it, you know, as opposed to just like the being able to really enjoy the pure stream of the thing in and of itself, you know, that's the, that's the kind of the way I think about how the practice matures in the nervous system and develops. And, um, but, you know, it's only one kind of practice. Like, uh, you know, I think it's good to also explore practices that are about indulging your passions and your expressions. And in fact, a lot of, like, there's a lot of iterations of, uh, even in, in Buddhism, like in Vajrayana and where it's all about the expression side, you know? And so I don't feel personally like I've had to, uh, make any, um, you know, like, I, I mean, no, it's not true. I, there are things you have to, you kind of end up letting go of because this is kind of a longer subject, but, um, you know, you're, uh, like sometimes as you go deeper and deeper in practice, your drivers, your, what you consider your fundamental drivers kind of fall away. And what, what falls away is what was fixated about them. So you might love art, making art, or maybe you love this thing. And, and insofar as you were doing that thing out of a sense of, anxiety or I had to get it right or I, I need to prove myself or you know that can be the it's like that's like the sometimes the, the like a scaffolding that holds up a, a passion is all this other stuff and when that scaffolding falls away I, sometimes it's like we don't know who we are without that because it's so central to our identity and sometimes so that that means the whole the passion itself can be something we don't know how to engage with now we have to relearn because we only knew how to do this thing in a really neurotic way <laughs> I don't know if any of that's making sense, but um, well, just some uh, spontaneous random words salad there at the end about uh, being a human being. That's how I take on some of it anyway. I'll probably write posts about some of the stuff through the home base. That's what's cool about the home base uh, stub stack is I can finally share some, um, uh, you know, more kind of deeper thoughts about some of these things and topics. But thank you everyone for. Uh, all the comments and and you know as always to say there's a lot of wisdom in the community of a lot of meditators have been doing this for a long time so i always encourage people if you hear a question you're like oh this is how i think about it then you know feel free to share because there's a lot of good learning there i'm seeing mm. nice friends so hey nice chris Yeah. Okay. Well, oh, there's a lot of I can't really read all these comments. I'm going back too fast, but anyway. No, no, no. Thanks for everybody. Um. Uh. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm doing it on my phone this time, so it's like little tiny, or like words. I can't read very well. Peace, friends. We'll see you next Sunday. I'll be in New York actually that day, so I think I get back in time to to do this. But if I don't, it might be Andrew. If he's available, or sometimes Aaron does it. Okay. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good day. <laughs>